For this quick tip, we're going to cover what geome caches are, how we can put them into our scene, and the basic settings we need to have, whether it be in Flowgraph or just to have it play. So we're going to give a basic structure of it, and then I'm going to show you how to maybe implement it in your scene. So to begin with, what we can do is go to Create Object, and inside of Entities, we want to go to our render, and we're going to select Geome Cache. I'm going to press Control and Shift to snap it to the terrain, and I need to select in the entity properties on the right side here a geome cache that exists. Now we ship a few of them, so we can go to Objects, Geome Cache, and the one that I want to do is actually the brick example. And the CAX file is a compiled format of your ABC or Alembic file down here, so it's already been converted for us to do. I'm going to press Control and Shift again to snap this down to the floor. And let's make it a little bigger because we can actually use uniform scaling. It doesn't matter. So now I have my geome cache in the scene. And if I select it, we can come down and we can say we want it to play. So let's just have it play once. So now the cache is played out. It will continue to swing there until the end of the animation. We also have the ability to loop it. So if I press that, it will go ahead and loop every single time. Now obviously, inside of your scene, this kind of doesn't make sense exactly for you to have it loop over and over. So we're going to turn off the looping, and we're going to look at exactly what we can do to have a proximity trigger and walk into it and enable this geome cache to play out. So the next thing that I want to do is go to my triggers, and I can select a proximity trigger. I'm going to place it into my scene. And we can see it right here. If I press play, you'll notice that the proximity trigger stays in the scene. And this is because I have a specific setting. In order to be able to see this, we can go to console. And we want to type in draw procs. And we're looking for this bottom one right here that's already true. So if I press zero, you'll see that it goes away. This allows you to be able to debug it properly without having to search for your proximity trigger if you want to walk in the scene. So the next thing that I want to do is let's create a flow graph. And we'll call this one cache underscore FG for flow graph. And I'm going to snap my flow graph window to the center here. And I'm going to add the selected entity, which is the proximity trigger. Let's go ahead and as good of practice it is to output or enable it on start. And now pretty much what we want to do is say, when we enter, we want to start that cache. So let's go ahead and grab the geome cache. We can add this selected entity. Oops. And we get the geome cache, and we want to create, on enter, we want to start. So that's just a basic setup, and that's how easy it is just to get a geome cache to work. Let's go back into our scene and see how it plays out. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the scene with Control G, and I'm going to walk into the proximity trigger. And when I do, the ball should come crashing down through that wall. And it does it just like that. So you can understand how powerful these elements are, because if you were going to calculate all of this physics at real time, it would be very, very expensive to do. However, with geome caches, we're just doing a vertex cache, and it's very, very lightweight. So it doesn't stop with just the wall crashing down right here. You can have an entire castle come crashing down next to your player. It'll be very, very dramatic, and it'll help sell your scene in all of your levels.